John, we know the waterfront is separated from the city and by these concrete barriers. What do you think the next step is? Uh, why we're All the way. I mean, it's ridiculous. You go all the way from Tonawanda down to Lackawanna, the entire waterfront is separated from the city by a grade-separated highway. That, that doesn't make any sense. You know, you look at the great cities in the world that have great tax bases like San Francisco, Rio de Janeiro, Paris. There's not a freeway blocking your view when you go along the Seine and River in Paris. You, you know, New York City just tore down 20 years ago, tore down the uh, West Side Highway. And they've, that's the street now. And there's a connection. The real estate market in Chelsea and Tribeca, the neighborhoods along there, booming. Even in a recession, the real estate values have stayed high there because people like to be able to walk to the water. They like to be able to be connected with the water. And here you've got this road that doesn't carry enough traffic to justify it. If you had a boulevard here instead of a highway, it could handle the traffic. Uh, 30, between 30 and 40,000 cars a day. That's not enough to justify this mega structure, which is like the Berlin Wall. You know, the Berlin Wall is gone in Berlin. It's here in Buffalo. It's the Skyway. John, what did you do in Milwaukee? We're looking right now at the possibility of having a study. We know that the, uh, there's a study out there that said there's the possibility that it's going to cost, just to maintain the Skyway, over $120 million over the next 10 years. Uh, if you factor that in... It'd be a lot cheaper to tear it down. We'd, in Milwaukee, uh, we had a eight-tenths of a mile stretch of freeway called the Park East Freeway. We took it down. It cost about $30 million to take it down. It was an elevated freeway. And it would have cost about $85, $90 million, three times as much, to uh, build it back. I mean, it's design life. It was the end of 40 years, 50 years is about how long these roads last. Skyway's been around since just after World War II. So it's... it's uh, its design life is over. It's, it's basically uh, 55 years old. So they're going to have to rebuild it. It's going to cost you 100, over $100 million. You tear it down, it'll cost a third of that probably. What will it do for the city of Buffalo? When you talked about our economy, uh, right now that's dead land out there. What do you think it will do to the acreage and the value of that land? What you need to do, particularly on the north end of the Furman Boulevard here, right next to downtown. You put in that lift bridge that Congressman Higgins wants to put in, do that, and then put in the block structure from the regular part of Buffalo. You've got a nice block structure, put in some streets with the same size blocks as you have downtown. So it's an extension of downtown. And then you put in good urban development there. That'll reinforce the value of downtown. So downtown won't just look like an historic place, it's also part of the future if this area just across the river is developed. And also Kelly Island. Kelly Island can be a fabulous place. Uh, Kelly Island just happens to be the same size as Ile de City in Paris, exact same size. And the Ile de City is, has 19 bridges. It has beautiful buildings, Notre Dame Cathedral, all this stuff. That's probably not going to happen here, but Kelly Island could be developed so it's at the scale of downtown and it would be a great real estate thing. Water on all sides, it, it, great place for, uh, for business, for living, uh, for even light manufacturing. You could even leave one of the grain elevators there. There's one of them that's still functioning. Uh, you know, fine, leave it there. It's not going to hurt anything. They have a filter on it. Uh, it could be a really great thing. It, right now, this whole waterfront is dominated by the Department of Transportation and by this authority that you mentioned earlier, and it's stopping a lot of economic activity. You know, Buffalo has lost, fr from its peak of almost 600,000 people, it's down to, what is it, 250, 270,000? 280,000. 280,000. You know, you want to grow again. You, you might not get back to 600 right away, but you can grow if you let, if the government releases, you know, take, take their hands off trying to make everything the way they want it. Instead, allow development to happen on streets and blocks in the city and that it'll relieve taxes for the rest of the taxpayers. Why should they have to pay more and more for less and less every year? It's ridiculous. So if we 
remove barriers like the Skyway, if we connect to our downtown, uh, we can at some point and build support among the constituencies. You'll have the most beautiful port city on the Great Lakes. I, I, part of the reason for that is the competition. <laughs> you know, you go to the waterfront in Erie and in Cleveland, Toledo, you know, the closest ones to you here in Lake Erie. None of them are really what they could be. They, they've all been defaced. Cleveland has a freeway along the waterfront. It, you know, there's not a lot of competition. You put this stuff in place, everybody will want to be here. It'll open up the Buffalo will become a Great Lake City. Right now, nobody would know it. You come here and there's a barrier between the city and the lake. So it's like the, the greatest physical asset of the city, having this beautiful lake is cut off from the city. So all the value is cut off. The little bit of development you do have along the lake is very suburban style and isolated. You can't even walk to some of the houses because they're gated off. You know, that's not Buffalo. Buffalo needs to extend its urban fabric up to the waterfront and then it will stand out. It'll be one of the greatest cities on the Great Lakes. It can start to be a rival of Toronto. Sixty years ago, Buffalo and Toronto were in a battle for uh, which was going to be the bigger city. Now Toronto's left in the dust. But things change. History can go a different way. And uh, there's nothing wrong with Toronto growing. That's fine. But maybe Buffalo will grow faster than Toronto, and it'll be a great city rivaling Toronto once again. That can happen. And, but you got to stop doing these things. I can't believe the power that the DOT has. They had Robert Moses, who did so much damage to New York, New Orleans, even Sao Paulo, Brazil. He did a freeway plan there. It's one of the most unlivable cities on earth. And he did this damage here, and they're still doing it. It's like the guys at the DOT want to maintain that dead gray, you know, let's keep the city in its place. The only purpose of the city is running trucks through it at high speed. I mean, this whole idea of defeating congestion, all the great cities are congested. Buffalo isn't congested. You need more congestion, not less congestion. The idea that somehow you should build these big roads or maintain the Skyway because you're worried about congestion. What congestion? You don't have any. And what the city needs is more activity, more economy, more people. Uh, more businesses, all those things, and they'll come, but you can't do it when everything's blocked off from the lake and when you've got these government authorities stopping guys like Doug's uh, drive-in here from being able to have, to even be open. Well, I, I got the business community and even some of the labor people came around uh, and started to understand it, uh, that you have to build value in the city. You know, that building freeways, which are really kind of a rural form, putting those in the city is very destructive. That's why when you go to Europe, uh, you don't see them in big cities normally. But the kind of things I did to persuade, like my own people, I met with my uh, public works people, and they wanted to tear down a lot of the city with right turn lanes and tear down buildings and speed up the traffic. I said, well, your priority is speeding up traffic and tearing down buildings, but Speeding up the traffic is not going to add any tax base, but if you, if we don't tear down those buildings, those buildings will be around to help pay for your pension when you retire. That helped them. They started to think, yeah, we, we're in the value-creating business instead of the uh, movement of traffic. You know, Buffalo doesn't need to be the best place to drive fast. That's not a, you know, Detroit has that. Detroit's done that. Detroit is not a good model for Buffalo to follow. And you've been following Detroit's model here for the last 50, 60 years. Time to stop. Time to start adding value. Trying to let the city be an urban city. Don't try to turn it into a suburb. Don't try to turn it into a truck stop, which is basically what DOT's plan has been. Got to stop that. Got to start letting it be a city again. So we should be building for people, not for trucks, not for cars. Well, you can still, I mean, there's nothing wrong with having the cars around. It's just they don't have to drive on grade-separated streets everywhere. I mean, uh, you know, if you have a street like Elmwood, it's a great street. You can drive on Elmwood. You just can't drive 60 miles an hour on Elmwood, you know. People want to be on Elmwood. They enjoy it. You know, you could, people uh, 
and look around. They get, they get out of their car and walk around a little bit. You get on the Buffalo Skyway and you get out of your car on a day like this with the wind blowing, you walk around, you might end up going over the railing. So, <laughs> You'll be a statistic. You, yeah, so a lot of people don't do that. But Elmwood, it's more pleasant to be on Elmwood. So, And look at all the property value in Elmwood. All those buildings are securing the future pensions of City of Buffalo workers. All those buildings are paying taxes that relieve the taxes on other residents of Buffalo. So what's wrong with that? Why? It's a good thing. Yeah. It's a good thing. Well, John, I want to thank you for coming to Buffalo. Um, as chairman of the Waterfront Development Committee and as uh, South District Council member, we want to thank you for coming in here and your organization. We want you to come back in 2014. Hopefully we'll be successful. And I want to thank you for your leadership uh, when I went to Milwaukee and my, my colleagues and I, you, you showed us that we could have a better city and we appreciate your confidence. Yeah, we're going to, we're probably going to come here in 2014 or 2015, one of the two, for uh, our Congress for the New Urbanism uh, annual meeting. And so that will be about 1,500 architects, planners, developers, real estate people all coming here and I think pe people will really like Buffalo. There's a lot of work to do, but it's a beautiful city. Uh, you know, the Gold Dome, the Buffalo Theater, all the city halls, beautiful, all these things. And uh, I think Buffalo can restore a lot of its greatness. Maybe it'll, it was 100 years ago, it was one of the richest cities in the world per capita. Might be that again someday. You never know.